mobile is is where people should be developing for. I mean, it, it, the, the the amount of traffic that is moving to mobile is is astronomical. Welcome to the Smarter Building Materials Marketing Podcast, helping you find better ways to grow leads, sales, and outperform your competition. All right, everybody, welcome to Smarter Building Materials Marketing, where we believe your online presence should be your best salesperson. I am Zach Williams, alongside my co-host, Beth Popnikolov, and we have an awesome, awesome, awesome show lined up for you today. We are going to be talking about some of the most exciting ways that you could be going after marketing and disrupting your own product category. And to talk us through this, we have got one of the absolute best in the business. We're really excited to be able to welcome Joe Altieri. He is the inventor and founder of FlexScreen. Joe, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for being on the show. Oh, my pleasure. We're going to have some fun today. I'm yeah, really excited. excited. To, really, really excited. Awesome. So just in case our audience doesn't know who you are, can you take a couple of minutes, introduce yourself and give us a little bit of background about FlexScreen? Sure. Well, FlexScreen is the world's first and only flexible window screen. That's our little tagline, right? So, so we sell window screens, which is typically not a very sexy product. Uh, so uh, if, if I can make uh, screens sexy, you can make any business sexy, but... Um, <laughs> But yeah, so our company has been in business for, we've been producing for about seven years now. Uh, I was a, was a rep in the window and door industry. So I've been in the, in the window and door industry on the manufacturing side for about 22, 23 years now. And uh, my customers had a problem with window screens, you know, scratching and denting and hard to get in and out. Our product was birthed out of my garage. This was just a, a hobby that I, that I pulled my wife's uh, Yukon out of the garage and set up a workbench. And two years later, I had this really ugly prototype that I showed off to some contacts that I had in the industry. And they said, build it and we will come. And, uh, and so got some investors together and we, we opened up our first plant in, in Pittsburgh, which is where I'm located. And now we are in the middle of opening up our seventh manufacturing location. So we are growing fast over the past, um, you know, seven years. So it's, it's been a wild ride. And one thing for our listeners too, and you didn't hit on this Joe, I'm surprised, but you were also on Shark Tank. Right? Yeah, I, I, I you know, I, I try on, to like, like. I would lead with that. <laughs> My name's Joe. <laughs> I've been. On I run. Shark a, I run. I run a manufacturing, you know, organization. And oh, by the way, I'm famous. I'm kind of a big <laughs> <Yeah>, like. <laughs> Well, I, I try to keep knocking myself down a couple pegs. You know, we, yes. um, my my family and I were were in. Uh, we were going on vacation. We were on a on a a, um, a layover. This is just like two months ago. And I Shark Tank. You know, our first first time we were on it was two years ago, and then we were on it again. They did an update episode with us about a year ago. The attention is really heavy for a couple weeks after. You know, you kind of go to the gas station, like, hey, Joe, saw you on TV. But then it kind of dies off a little bit, and every once in a while you get recognized. But um, I got recognized in the airport and my, my family's like, Oh my goodness, here we go again. Dad's going to be, you're not gonna be able to live with him, you know? Um, so, but, uh, but yeah, I was on shark tank. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, and like I said, we, we were on twice. So we, we actually got a deal with Lori Grenier. Um, she's one of our equity partners now. And, um, we were doing so well within the first year that they did something that they usually don't do, which is we got an update episode the next year. We were growing fast, but then because of the show, we were in Home Depot and all that stuff. There's a lot, lot to talk about. So that's really cool. So one of the things that's really unique about FlexScreen is the way that you guys go to market. And it's not uncommon to have a new product or even a new company enter the industry, right? There's tons of demand, tons of innovation in our industry. But a lot of the time, those new products just get sucked right into the traditional channels. How did you resist that traditional go-to-market strategy, and what did it look like for you when you guys were starting out? We had a, a very interesting um, challenge starting out. So window screens have been the same for over 100 years now. So a metal window screen with a rubber spline was invented in 1907, right? So and it looks just like the screens that you probably have on your on your house unless you have flex screen. So so we we were entering a very very mature market. Like this is how we've always done screens. Why would we do anything different? You know those types of things. So even though our product answered a lot of of issues uh, for the window manufacturers and for the homeowners, we were having trouble 
um, getting people to convert, right? So it's something brand new. We've been doing this for a hundred years. Um, and so, you know, I had these investors that had put in millions of dollars, right? And our first year of sales was $400,000. Like, I mean, it was like, we did not come anywhere close to paying the bills, right? And so I'm like, okay, we have to do something else. Like what, what can we possibly do as this little company, this little startup that is going to get some, some attention? At this point, the corporate office was a closet. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. Like it was one of my, one of my partners had a building who was like, well, we have this storage area back here. Do you need an office? You know? And, um, I, I had a, a part-time guy who was helping me, you know, just answer phones and stuff like that. And then we brought on this intern and he was, he was, um, uh, doing digital, uh, some, some digital things. That was his, his degree he was going for. We we're like, okay, what can we do to, to possibly get some attention to our product? I don't have the money for a Super Bowl ad. I don't have, you know, even, even just doing ads in, in some of the, the industry publications, I just didn't have the money for it. And I'm like, well, digital marketing is kind of free if you do it yourself, right? I mean, it's, you know, you, you can do some of the things, some of the basic things you can do it without an agency. And so, we sent the the intern home. We put a black sheet up. I bought a piece of fabric, put a black sheet up, and we just started making videos, um, like trying to get the word out about us. Like, and 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 they were funny videos. They were crazy videos. They were making fun of me, making fun of our industry, making fun of like it was like me hitting stuff with with um, hammers, you know, running stuff over with cars, you know, just things that were so so crazy that it it started getting some some attention. Um, you know, and, and then, you know, just doubling down every time we would get a little bit of attention, we're like, now we have to do more. Now we have to do more. And now we have to do more. I was a traditional rep. I was a, I was a sales rep. So I, you know, I'd put my tie on and I would go out and knock on doors and, and things like that. I'm like, this is not going to work. Like, it's just not working. I go in and the, and the company say, yeah, we love your product. It, it solves all these problems. Like, well, why aren't you buying it? Well, because nobody knows what it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, there has to be something different that, that is, that we do. Uh, and that's, you know, that's kind of how we, that's how we started. It was, it was out of desperation. <laughs> so See, I think that's really interesting. Cause like, I, I like to read books about marketing and business and things like that. And you oftentimes read stories of even direction, like, Hey, you, if you're building a brand, you have to be different. You have to do something that's very Contrarian is not the right word, but you have to stand out in some way. Like we were talking about this before the show, like big ass fans, for example, like they are very different in just their name, you know, and you could have that thought and that strategy purely from reading these books. And there's companies that have done that, but you did it out of like, I'm not selling anything. Yeah. And you attributed it to the fact that you didn't stand out. Was that the issue? Or did you just say, Hey, let's try this out. And then people responded and then you leaned into it. So um, it's it's interesting that you said about reading the book because that's exactly what I was doing. So uh, again, I you know I, I am a ferocious reader. Like I, I love knowledge and I love learning new things. And I read a book by um, an author called uh, named Sally Hogshead. It's called Fascinate. Oh yeah, it's a great book. Oh, so you've read it? Yeah. So her big thing is different is better than better, right? So I was going out and trying to show people that my product was better, and they're like, "Meh, okay, great." I had to show that it was different. I had to go out and and do something different. I had to be different. Now, some of the big brands in the window and door industry started to understand this, right? And they're starting to get their digital presence up a little bit. We were one of the first ones. Again, seven years ago, nobody was doing this um, in the window and door industry. Um, and so as we came out, we were, if you were on LinkedIn, you know, as a, we were coming up on your feed because nobody else was doing anything. Right. So, yeah. um, if you were, if you were on Facebook, if you, um, even just, you know, trying to get the, the ad words for window screens and stuff like that, like we were grabbing really, really cheap, um, digital real estate because nobody else was doing anything, um, with that. So, um, but yeah, we, we made the, the very conscious decision to be different. I mean, and, and again, if you, if you look at, um, you know, our brand, you know, it's me with a baseball cap and a, and a, and a t-shirt on, you know, the, the tattoos showing again, just these things that are so non-traditional because our brand is non-traditional. And so we just went all in on it. You, you know, what's, what's interesting about this too, Joe, is like, we oftentimes talk to manufacturers and we're helping them with their value prop and how they present and they'll go, Hey, well, our product performs 10% better in this environment. 
and like we, I sometimes feel like the bear of bad news because we're like, nobody cares. Like, yeah. <laughs> exactly. like they don't. They don't. You're exactly it's not right. enough. Yeah, it's not enough. It has to be yeah. exponentially better or just complete game changer in order for somebody to go. You know what? I'm going to try something new, because you know this. If you're a contractor or an architect or a builder, you don't like new. You don't because it introduces risk. It introduces variability to the process at which you've developed. It has to be so different that you're like a, a light bulb has to go off in order for somebody to go, yeah, I, I want to try that. So that goes back to Joe, you were saying, you know, you guys started these incredible videos just to get people's attention, like whatever was weird, you were having good conversations and like so close to making the sale. But when it came to, oh, this is new, I, I can't be the first one. Where did you start to see that change? When did you start to get some velocity behind getting multiple deals in a row? It was when um, our message started getting to our customer's customer. That was the the key, was getting beyond the window manufacturers to showing the window. Our main business is, at that point was selling to window manufacturers. So we weren't doing any retail, anything like that. But we had to get our message. We had to jump the window manufacturers because the window manufacturers had absolutely no incentive to bring something new to their to their manufacturing process. They, you know... Yes, it solved problems for them, but not enough. Again, maybe it was the 10% of problems or 15% or whatever the case may be. It wasn't enough for them to put the effort into getting my message to their customers who then would get it to, to, the, um, to the homeowners. And so we started doing webinars. Again, this is all you know six, seven years ago. Zoom was brand new. We were the first like people in the in the industry to to start doing things like this. And so we would go to a window manufacturer and say, "Look, you know, it's fine that that you're not getting this demand. How about if we just put it out to your dealers? If nothing else, you're going to try to bring value to them and and show them that there is something new, that there is that you are trying to be innovative, but it's going to take them to partner with you to be innovative." Um so the way that we want to do that is we're going to introduce Joe virtually to your entire team. So wherever you are in the world, you can log on, you can drive down the drive down the 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 road, have Joe open on your screen and your team can ask him questions and get the full presentation. And so that was that was really really big. But then through those efforts, some of our videos and stuff like that went viral, which was which was helpful. I mean, we had a we had a TikTok video again we're a window screen company on TikTok. We have a TikTok video that had got millions of views. And it was just one of our interns, like, you know, we were dancing and they, they were, they were squeezing it and it had like the SpongeBob, you know, in the background. And, um, but again, now we had hundreds of videos that didn't do very well, but we had a couple that went really, really big. And, um, and then, so then we started getting attention from homeowners and then that attention from the homeowners brings demand to the window dealers, the window dealers bring demand to the window manufacturers and any digital marketing. And you guys know this, but for, for the people that are listening, you have to figure out who the real audience is. Um, because sometimes you don't know who the real, you think that it's the person that you're selling to when it's actually not. Um, and, and so that was, again, that was a big paradigm shift for us. I was the sales guy we made a big shift from sales to marketing. Um, and, and that is, that is huge to understand that there's a huge difference between sales and marketing. And when you become a marketing company, your message becomes more important than, than your product. And in a lot of ways. Well, even too, like I've, and I'm a little bit of a nerd in this way. I've followed you all for a couple of years. I remember I would check your site and I can't believe I'm sharing this with you. I would check your site and you all would make optimizations and little things to like your checkout cart. Yep. Like, I don't know if you know, I don't even know if you know this, Joe, like you probably do, but like there were points where you would ask people up front, Hey, you want to buy our window screen? What size do you need? And then there was a change where I saw you didn't even ask that until after you made a purchase. And I was like, that's really smart because you're, you're removing any kind of friction points, any kind of issues. You're just focusing purely on the outcome. And that's a very marketing you know, first approach to organization. I know we're talking about TikTok videos, but even in how people buy your product you know, as mm -hmm. an end consumer, you're focusing on what's the experience and is it feel easy? Because that's also what you're selling too. It's like if it you say your product is better and it's easier, but then buying from you is difficult, well, those two things don't align. Mm -hmm. 
You're, you're absolutely right. That was a strategic thing. What we were, again, I'm a data person. As, as, as crazy as it sounds, you know, with all of our marketing stuff, we do, we, I love data. And, you know, when you have, when you have somebody that can go and get into the data of your website and see where consumers stop, it became really obvious. Like we, we could get them to our site. No problem at all. We get them there. We actually get them through. They, they would actually watch the videos. They would do all this stuff. Then they would watch how to measure for the screens because we needed them to, in the original original e-commerce site, they had to measure first. Then they would go in and, and do the, the checkout. Um, and they would just stop. We would just lose them at that point. Oh, yeah. Like, so, I'm not measuring anything. Yeah. Well, or <laughs> or um, I we weren't the candy bar at the checkout, right? Right, right. 100%. It's very easy for a homeowner to go, I need a new screen. Oh, flex screen. That looks really cool. Let me buy one. You could not buy our screens from the toilet. Man, and I, that sounds te- terrible, right? <laughs> no, but, that's great. You could, I mean, that's like, a that's great, great. No, I think that's a great bar. Right? Absolutely. It, 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 and, and that was it. I'm like, hey, look, if we can't, if somebody sitting down on the toilet cannot buy our product, we need to figure out a way for them to be able to do that. If they can't get my message on their phone and, and check out and do everything from, from their phone, then we miss the mark somewhere. And that was the big, that was the big change. I'm so glad you brought that up because like it was, it, it feels like it was so long ago, but that was a huge conversation for us was like, what happens if, um, if we, Say buy now, measure whenever in the heck you want, um, and that was huge. I mean, it just it it went from it went from you know consumers having literally uh, they would have to spend forty five minutes on my website to check out to they could do it in thirty five seconds. You know, forty seconds. Here's my address. Here's my changer. credit card number, and I'm out. Yeah, yeah. Because what you're doing is the way I think about it is it's like you're by making it more difficult, you're solving your problem. You're not solving theirs. Exactly. Yep. You're solving the problem. Like, well, now I, I don't, I, now I have to go figure out your size. That's a you problem. You should go figure that out for them or make it on their terms. And too many make people it do it the opposite. Yeah. Yep. And, and so we would have people, um, you know, and we've seen this again, we, we see the data they'll go on and they'll, they will buy our screens in the fall when they're taking their, you know, they're cleaning their windows for the winter and stuff like that. And they actually don't get their, their order delivered. They don't, they don't want them until spring. They'll measure them, you know, five months later. And so they have that order live. They've, they've already ordered a couple of them. Um, they just don't want them now. They don't want to measure them. They don't want them sitting in their basement. And so we actually see a big uptick of orders but not fulfillment in the fall. Uh, again, it, it's it's crazy to think about that. But if you're not looking at the data and you don't understand what you're looking at, um, you can you can miss what your consumers are telling you by their ordering patterns. So, uh, and again, you, you guys you guys know this because you're you're I, in that. I'm industry. totally gonna, I, I'm totally going to so put that seen. in a presentation. I know Just I'm going to put this so in a presentation. <laughs> like, can can your audience buy their product from the toilet? And I'll put oh, your name that's it. yeah. Be prepared yeah. to hear that on a regular basis. <laughs> but but isn't it? I mean, yeah, again, it's, a great, it's, it's, it's so a great it's so barometer. simple, but it's profound. It's it's Amazon, right? Yeah. 100%. Je- Jeff Bezos, you know, the, he 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 started off with books because it was easy, right? It was something easy for him to ship. But he, he I, I'm, I'm maybe I'm giving him more credit than than he deserves. But I feel like he saw this where you know if if a consumer can can order get something easily no matter where they are, number one, they'll do it because of convenience. Number two, they don't care what they pay. I know that I overpay for things on Amazon and yeah. I don't care because yeah. I can oh. order it from the toilet. It's I don't speed. care at all. Absolutely. It's, it's speed. Yeah. I talk about it all the time. I'm like, Spotify killed like BitTorrent and all of those other you know free music mm-hmm. platforms, not because they had a better product, but because you could have music more quickly. Speed, speed is an ultimate killer and convenience is a part of that too. It is. It you absolutely know? is. And so, but yeah, again, those little things for us are, um, we just think differently, right? I, I can't think of, I can't think of one other company in the window and door industry that's going, can I do this from the toilet? Like, can I do this from the bath? Like if, if that conversation came up at any window manufacturer or any dealer or anything like that, I would be really surprised, but we're willing well, to now. have those conversations. Now they, yeah. yeah All of your ready. listeners are going to be like, well, you know, 
Well, Won't gonna, everybody go in on the like toilet on and see what I... You're going to yeah. see it on a billboard. Buy windows. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think there's a way, though, that this could apply. Even So let's imagine you don't have an e-com platform, because I know a lot of our listeners don't. This is something that we actually talk a lot about when it comes to just a simple form fill. So if you get, and this is where you also goes back to Joe, to you saying you made a shift from being a sales organization to a marketing organization. Because sales teams, they want everything and their mother's made a name on that form because they want you to, they want your newsletter to qualify them as a sales lead before anything else happens. But to your point, you're stopping so many qualified leads. You're basically cutting your sales off at the knees because you're asking the consumer, whatever the consumer is for you, you're asking your audience and your customer to bear the burden instead of get them in the funnel, reduce the friction, and then let your sales, whatever that looks like for you, it looks like e but for a lot of manufacturers, it looks like a sales team, take it from there and help drive it across the goal line. And I think it's so crucial to think through what are the tweaks that we can make and then the exponential impact that you've seen on your revenue because you guys were able to risk and they're like, no, we're going to just reduce friction. And if it means that we are holding these things, let's let so be it. But they've paid us money. So let's believe that they're going to come back to it. Yeah. How, how many times have you stopped, you know, stopped looking at a website or stopped filling out a form because it was a pain in the butt? You know, every I, time. I, mean, I just mobile, want to say every yeah. time. Is mobile is is where people should be developing for. I mean, yeah. it, it, the, the the amount of traffic that is moving to mobile is is astronomical, you know. And, and so if, if you don't have a, a a not a mobile optimized site, I'm talking about a site that is designed for mobile. Like there's there's a difference, right? Like, oh, I, I shoved my website into this mobile, you know, this round peg into this square hole. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a site that is really pleasant to use on mobile. And then to your, to your other point, form fills, there's times where I actually want to know about a product and they want so much information and it's not auto-populated and I'm like, screw it. I'm, I'm not doing this. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. And, and isn't that every, a crazy, it's, it's, it's a crazy shift to, well, to think about that. That Well, I, I, think it's, I think it's important to know because it's like what you're saying is like it's, everything is an exchange. Like everything, time is an exchange. You, you're, what you're doing is an exchange. If you as a manufacturer or anybody in marketing are not always giving more value in exchange for what that person is giving you, you're going to lose. Yep. You know, and sometimes that exchange is money. Sometimes it's time. But to your point, you're like, you're making it too difficult. Too many people do it. So I want to ask you about what you're doing now. Like you mentioned, hey, seven years ago, we were doing webinars. We started doing TikTok videos. You have a podcast. Like you're doing a lot of things a lot of manufacturers want to do or think are really progressive. Where are you going? Like, where do you see your brand going a year, two, three years down the road? What are you trying to push and plan for right now? So um, for us, I mean, we're still big into, um, you know, into social media, um, not necessarily social media marketing, but social media information. You know what I mean? So we we still do a lot. And, and I'm still the spokesperson for, for our company. So a lot of our uh, marketing efforts are around me and my story and even, you know, behind the scenes with my family and things like that. And so, you know, we are, we've really gotten, um, I don't want to say away from, you know, some of the things that, that got us to where we are now. We're just maturing a little bit. And so now, you know, we, we got on Shark Tank. So again, the crazy videos and stuff got us attention, right? So now we got on Shark Tank. Now there's a, there's this this Joe the entrepreneur story and background that we're we're really um, doing a lot to concentrate on because again we don't have to concentrate on our product as much anymore um, and and showing the features and benefits of it now people are just interested in what makes this company tick and who's that guy behind it uh, I go into meetings now um, where people. Because we have so many connections on LinkedIn, I think I have a hundred thousand connections or something like that on on LinkedIn or followers, and and so which is a lot of the people in our industry, and so I'll go into meetings and they're like, "Hey, your your grandson was so cute, you know, going down the slide," and they feel this connection with me, even though I've never met them before, right? So I don't necessarily feel that for them, but they feel this towards me, which is making it's 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 this soft sell introduction for them to feel some sort of um, intimacy that 
makes my job easier as I'm trying to get them to consider using our, our product. We're moving more into the personal side of, of our brand than the product side. Well, I think that I think that's interesting. You you mentioned that too, because like I think you and I met at a at an event you were you and I both spoke at, and you started the event by I mean they hyped you up and all your Shark Tank and all your success and everything. And the first thing you did was you told a story about how you hit your you hit your own face in the like what'd you do? You hit yourself in the face with your arm or something like that? Yeah, yeah. I had a yeah. big cast on my arm and oh yeah, and you like smack. yeah, bonked yep. yourself on yep. the head or something like that. And I was like, oh, I was like, this is really great because you're a, a smart sales tactic and marketing, but you're humanizing yourself, you're making it more approachable, you're making the brand of of Joe as well as Flex Screen feel approachable. And I think a lot of brands they feel very standoffish too. And what you're saying is like, no, you can connect with me on an emotional level as well as on a product level. And you're seeing a lot of brands do this. I mean, it's, it's like exactly what the Shark Tank guys do. They're now leveraging their presence as a person to now go do that with other brands that they then support. Like I just saw a commercial with Mr. Wonderful and he's like doing something with Rocket Mortgage or something. I don't know, some lender, you know, and people feel a connection to them. It's the same thing with what you're doing. But a lot of brands are afraid of that because they're afraid of like the unscripted moments. Of like, well, what if I mess up? Or what if that person says something that puts our brand in a bad light. And I think that's the antithesis of where brands and, you know, consumers want, you know, where they want to go. Consumers are making a big shift into they want to buy from people. They don't want to buy from companies as, as much anymore. Uh, and, and that is, um, again, if, if you as a, as a listener, if you're listening to this, if you're not understanding that, if you're, if you're still putting out pictures of the jobs that you've done um, on your social media, like you're missing what the consumers want. They want, they want to feel a connection. They want to feel trust. They want to feel that, um, you know, th that you're somebody that they want to do business with. Uh, and and again, in, in in our instance, it's the 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 little bit um, you know non traditional side of things. You know the the tattoos and the hats and you know the the, the fun things that we're doing. Uh, I'm loud, you know, and I'm loud in our videos. Th those types of things. That's not for everybody. That if that's not your personality, then don't do that. But but show who you are and why a consumer wants to buy from you. Um, and, and you as a as a person, you as a as a company, you don't need a figurehead. But your company needs an identity, and and so many so many companies in the window and door industry don't have an identity. They they haven't put the the effort into doing that, and I really think that they're missing the mark. Uh, I think what you're saying is really important, and I think it's important to showcase the success that Flex Screen has had in doing exactly what you're doing. Because I can hear I can hear the objections in the back of my head, right? Because we have these conversations regularly about the importance of building a brand to further your company, building a brand as a, a major part of growing your sales. And I hear the objections, but it's also why that when you try to introduce a persona within your brand, it can feel inauthentic because it's not really who you are. It's just kind of like generic homeowner couple standing in front of a window and door versus actually having a brand that I can identify with, that I would talk about, that I would remember, that I want to align with, that I trust, not just like really good looking people standing in or around your products. Like that's not what we're talking about here. There, there's a guy that... Um that I'm, I'm connected with on, on LinkedIn. And, uh, he just sent me like a, a request out of nowhere and he's a window washer in Michigan. Right. And he happened to come across our screens when he was washing, when he was washing. So he, he kind of got a hold of me. I love his content. He, he washes windows. This is all he does. He goes out and washes people's windows. Right. And if he was in Pittsburgh, if he was where I live, he would wash my windows and he would wash every single window of every one of our factories if I could get him to do it. Because he is just a, a personable guy. He goes out, he's like, hey, I'm here today. Look how great the weather is. And, and he, he'll play some music and he'll dance a little bit. And, and he, just, he just has fun. And that's his personality. But I want to buy from him, even though, I, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just... Man, you you have to have you have to have something that you that you as a company represent, um, and it can't just be this is what I sell. It it's just not enough anymore. 
It isn't. I mean, I think about the brands we look at in the building product space. Like I think about Techo Block and like how mm-hmm. they they've got Paper Pete. Or I think about was it Sherman Williams or Benjamin Moore that had that one guy, Beth? It was Sherman Williams. Sherman Williams, yeah. Did you, yeah. did you hear about that, Joe? Well, now it's now it's Florida. Now it's Florida Paint. Paints. Now it's yeah, Florida, Florida Paints. Paint. Did you hear about that? There yeah. was a guy no, no, on what TikTok. Is that? Guy on TikTok, Beth, you, you tell the story. You know it better than me. So there's this guy. His name is Tony. He worked for Sherwin Williams, but he started a TikTok profile, and it's literally him mixing paint. And all of his oh. videos were going viral. It's I have seen this. Fascinating yep. to watch. So Sherwin Williams found out that Tony was had a TikTok huge TikTok presence, and they fired him. I did hear this. Yep. So what happened is there ended up being effectively like a bidding war amongst smaller paint companies to get Tony to come work for them because they saw the value of basically free advertising to literally millions of people every single day. He now works for Florida Paint. Um, We're actually having him on the podcast later this year because we're so fascinated by his story. But he now works for Florida Paint and launched a sub-brand of paints called Tonester Paints underneath the Florida paints. Like they have reaped such incredible benefits and he does the same thing. I follow him because it's mesmerizing. It's just literally like, I wonder what the sunrise would look like. Let's make paint that looks like Skittles. And it's just like pouring things in, (laughs) mixing it. And I watch it every time. I'm a total fool for these videos, but it's me and millions of people. So I don't feel so bad. To your point, Zach, though, that's somebody that people identify with and believe in. And I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, you know, a survey of one, but I would never have considered Florida paints before, like as a homeowner, if I'm re if I was repainting my whole house, well, it's brilliant. I don't really feel like it's Florida brilliant. paints would have been on the map, yeah. but now because I follow Tony, I would totally consider them. Yeah, and you want his, his signature brand I want too. Tony stuff. Like yep. I'm, I believe in Tony, the brand and Tony believes in Florida paints. I also think it's really cool that he launched a paint brand with them, not competing against them which I'm sure is partly what Sherwin Williams was worried about. But anyway, I mean, it's just a really great example of, yeah, bringing a person into the brand. Well, and it is, it's a great example of that, but it's also a great example of give me a reason to buy from you, right? So all things being equal, right? So Sherwin Williams, Florida Paint, you know, whatever the Lowe's brand or Home Depot or whatever, it, it, let's just say that they're all price similar. They're are they all they're all very similar. Like I said, one might be ten percent better, but I'm not going to know the know the difference, right? So give me a reason to buy from you, um, and that could be Tony, right? That that that's that you're entertaining. I like you, and so I want to buy from from you. Uh, and and there's so many. Um, I've had lots of conversations with. You know, again, I'm in the window and door industry. So window dealers, they're like, how can I take what you do and and do it the same? And I'm like, you can't. You can't do the same thing as me, right? But you can give your your potential your potential consumers a reason to buy from you. Um, you know, one one example that I use with them, and I, I use this over and over and over again. I'm like, become an expert. Like, go out and show a job, and don't say. Here's the before and after pictures. No, nobody cares about before and after pictures. And I'm sorry, like, I, I just, you just don't. Like, yes, you go, oh, that's pretty. That's great. But like, here's the problem that they had. They had drafts in their house. Their, their, their expenses were really, really high. Mrs. Jones called us in. Here's what I was, here's what I was seeing. And you, you go through and you actually show the homeowner that might be looking at windows sometime in the future. Like, hey, here's all the things. Um, you know, we tried some things that you know, went through some options. Here's some different things that we could try. But what it came down to is we just had to replace our windows. Like, oh, look, here's what happened because she had a leak. Look how this is rotted out. And you become this expert in your geography. And that gives a that gives a homeowner a reason to buy from you. All Again, white rectangles are white rectangles. I mean, there's there's a lot of companies that buy white rectangles that go into into holes and walls. Give me a reason to buy from you. And that's that's where social media is so effective and can get your message across so effectively and so cheaply um, if you do it right. Well, I think you hit a really good point there, Joe, is like a lot of listeners are probably listening to this going, shoot, I need to do what Joe is doing. And in some regards, they do. But they can't, they can't do exactly what you're doing because you're you and they're them. And I think that that's important to know is like, there are things about your brand that are really interesting and it's your responsibility to find a way to, like you said, help them solve that problem, be that solution to them. 
in an entertaining and educational way. And you don't have to copy you because you can't. There's a there's a quote of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Somebody I told him like they're like, oh, I I would never want to be like you. And he was like, don't worry, you never could. Yeah. Yeah. And like, and I know it's like a little bit of an ego hit, but like, it's funny because it's like, like people can't be Joe, but they can be themselves and they can find ways to develop their brand in a way that resonates with people and makes them want to buy from them. And I think that's the important point is to risk that personality because people, if you want to get them to try something or do something different, you have to, you have to risk along with them, you know? And and the, the, the risk is that that's the, that's the key, right? And when it comes to a lot of a lot of companies, the risk that they are afraid of is personal embarrassment. Let, let's just be honest. Like that's that is the biggest risk that somebody is trying to to not undertake is them being embarrassed. And let me tell you, I have had I've had companies in our industry. I've had family members. I've had all these people come up. Why are you making a fool of yourself? Why are you doing this? I'm like, because I want attention because that's the only way that my company is going to survive is if I get attention. And I'm not afraid to, to embarrass myself to get that intent. Now, again, I never go out to embarrass myself, but my team, they put out some embarrassing, I do embarrassing things in front of the camera and I don't always want them to get out in the wild and they put it out, but it humanizes me and, and there's a purpose for it. And, and it's okay but you have to get past that. You have to get past the, this is, what will my Aunt Susie, who I see once a year at Christmas, think about me? Who in the heck cares? Like, go out and do the right thing for your company, do the right thing for your employees, do the right thing for your family, and take some of those risks. This, I, this I, awesome. I get really passionate about that because no, that's, I love that's it. something it's that comes really up important. all the time. Like, I could yeah. never do that. No, you don't want to do it. That's the difference. So you can you do it. You feel uncomfortable. You, don't, you feel yeah. uncomfortable doing it. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, there was a there was a quote that I love. It says, "You will be freed from um, w- uh, worrying about what other people think of you when you realize how little they do." And <laughs> and and, and right? Yeah, it, absolutely. And it's it's one of those things like we think that something that we put out on social media is the biggest thing in the world, whether it's good or bad or embarrassing. I scan right by it. Like, you know, like uh, whatever, uh, you know, it's, it's no big deal until something catches my attention. And now I'm, now I'm interested. I'm intrigued. Now I'm, um, I'm engaging. And so that's the, that's the biggest hurdle when it comes, in my opinion, it's, it's, it's not the, the cost of hiring a digital agency. You should 100%, everybody should have a digital agency that they're working with. Um, no doubt in my mind, there should be somebody managing, helping you to manage your online presence. Um, but it's the, it's the getting over that hump of allow myself to be exposed in, in, in this way. And they just can't get past it. It's true. Man, Joe, this has been awesome. I feel like we were talking about this before the show. Like we could talk for hours about this. <laughs> we could. I, I, I know. I, there's like a hundred. Like, don't end it. No, not yet. To. Not yet. <laughs> um, for our listeners, we need if they want to, Zach. I uh, know we do need a part two. Yeah, um, you heard it. For too. listeners, if they want to follow you, they want to connect with you, they want to buy a flex screen. What's the best way for them to do that? If if they want to engage with me, I'm joealtieri.com. So it's J O E A L T I E R I dot com. Again, let me tell you how having a, a vanity URL. I hated that. I absolutely hated it. Um, but it's important. You know, we we do. I do blog posts. I do videos. You know, we have podcasts. All that stuff. So. Um, again, I'm putting myself out there for all of you guys that are listening, but then if you want to know more about flex screen, it's just flexscreen.com. Um, you know, we definitely love to, to have anybody reach out to us on either of those platforms. That's great. Joe, man, this has been awesome. Can't thank you enough. And I think you're a huge inspiration to people in the industry that want to get better. They want to push their brand further. They want to stand out and really appreciate you taking time to share with us. And for our listeners, if you enjoyed this content, make sure you go to venvio.com slash podcast to subscribe and get more. Until next time, I'm Zach Williams alongside Beth Popnikolov. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.